Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to the channel, Mr. Reef Buster. On today's episode, we're going to be adding an auto top off system to my Nano Lagoon tank. So, for those of you who have been following this channel, on the previous version of this tank before it crashed, I did have an auto top off system. I had, a, I had the, um, the Auto Aqua um, Nano auto top off system. Unfortunately, that um, auto top off system died on me. Uh, within less than a year of getting it, so it, I, I wasn't really happy with that product, and I tried to get a um, you know warranty exchange done uh, through the company, and they were not too helpful with it. So I decided that now that I'm reviving this tank, I'm gonna put a new auto top off system on it and try something different, try something that's been tested and proven for many years. Uh, I went with a more reliable company this time around. No knock against Auto Aqua, but it's just that I had a bad experience with them. So this time around, I wanted to go with someone, somebody more reliable, in my opinion. This is just strictly my opinion. So today we're going to be unboxing um, the Tunes Oscillator right here. And we're going to be setting it up on my tank. And I'm going to give you guys my thoughts. Uh, I'm going to be using it for a couple of weeks, so this video is going to be cut in half. So you're going to see the unboxing and my first impression. Second half of the video, I'm going to show you how I set it up and my thoughts on it after using it for a couple of weeks. So that's how I'm going to do this review for this product. So stay tuned. We're going to go down to the unboxing section get to the table, unbox everything, I'll give you my first impression on the product itself after unbox and then I will show you guys how I set it up on my tank. So here we go. So here we are on the bench with the unboxing of the Tunes Osmolator Nano uh, 3152. So let's open it up, see what we get inside. Um, before we do, I just want to show you guys what's on the box itself. So on the back of the box, it will show you everything that this comes with. As you can see, you got your adapter, you have your pump, I believe that's the magnet. So and it tells you instructions and what it comes with in German and different languages. So um, pretty simple packaging, not too bad. So let's open her up and see what do we get. Of course, instruction manual. Uh, and it tells you they did a quality assurance and it tells you which number it is all right manual if you want you can read it or you can watch this video let's put those aside and see what do we get so first thing first this looks like the controller module And the water sensor, the height sensor. It's a float switch type. So that's that. Let's get a little screw on it. Uh, we'll do that later. Okay, let's put that down up front and see what else we get. Uh, so tubing for the water circulation. You have your pump right here and then we have magnet this is the cover for the float switch to you know make sure things don't get stuck in it like snails and stuff or whatever and this looks like some sort of holder so put that there and let's open this guy up It's the adapter, DC adapter. Let's put this inside the box, put the box away. All right, so let's start opening these things up and see how we gonna, how we're gonna assemble this guy. I mean, they 
as far as wire management goes, they put a lot of uh, zip ties and stuff to you know make sure all the wiring is good. They're not all over the place. So let's go ahead and take this off. Flow valve. Pretty long. Oh, this is a super duper duty zip tie. I'm gonna have to get a cutter for this. Um, should I do it now? I should do it a little bit later, but let's let's take care of this adapter, power adapter. Take that off. Lengthy. Okay. Standard brick. Okay. Magnets. Oh, uh, I wonder where this magnet goes. I have a strong feeling this magnet is going to go with this float switch. Uh, but let's see where this float switch goes itself. Uh, let's close that up. Float sensor switch. Okay. This protector, oh there it is. So this is how we're gonna do it. I'm gonna take this off, put this over it, just so, and then we're gonna screw the bolt, the nut, to secure it in place. And this is how it's going to protect your float switch from debris and unwanted things that could get jammed in there and mess up your whole system. So, float switch is taken care of. Um, assume, oh, here we go. Now that you put the, the cover on on the float switch, you can connect it to the back right here, to the magnet. So it goes like this. Snap it in place and voila, snapped in place. So, so this is one part and you have the magnet, there'll be glass in between and you put it like that and it's gonna do what it needs to do. I've got my finger in between now. So let's put this little cardboard in the middle. You don't want these magnets are quite strong. You don't want them to get stuck, or you're gonna have a hard time taking them apart. So we got the float switch part taken care of. Let's put that aside, and the float switch comes here and connects to this controller, um, and then this controller has these two modules. I'm gonna have to see where these modules go. I'm assuming, yes, so let me get a cutter so I can cut this zip tie and show you guys exactly <coughs> what's going on. Okay, we're back. I got my zip tie cutter. Let's go ahead and cut this careful. Do not cut the wire. Uh, I'm gonna try to do it safely as I can, here it goes, zip tie out, cut her away. So the pump, as you can see, this is the pump, and at the end of the pump, there is these two wires. So, my guess is, without reading the manual, you guys saw me unbox it without, and I didn't read the manual, so we're gonna have to put these guys, let's get closer. So these wires would go in respectively one of these things and you're gonna clamp it. I'm sure there's a way to clamp it, yeah. So then you, then you push it down, let me get closer. You push it down and you clamp it in. It does not matter which wire you connect to which one of these plugs. Okay, so the way you're gonna connect it is, you're gonna push this pin, push this clip in, 
and then put the wire, feed the wire inside, and then you let go, I guess. Hold on. Uh. So you push it in, and when it goes in, you push it in really tight. You push it in really tight, and you feed the wire all the way inside until you hit the back, and then you let go. And that's it, you're connected. You don't have to worry about anything else. Okay, so now that is taken care of, uh, what I might end up doing is I might put some tape or some heat shrink around this part so I don't want any water uh, touching it. So I might do that when I, when I do the installation. So that's taken care of. And one more quick thing for those of you guys um, that might wanna use this for a bigger tank. So the original, the factory settings on this controller is set for a tank up to 20, uh, let me just double check here, up to 26 gallons. So if you have a 26 gallon total water volume, not just a display tank, if you have a 26 gallon system, the factory settings will work. The timer is set for 1.4 minutes. So one minute and 40 seconds, it will run once the float switch goes off. And after that, it will shut off. And if you need it, if you need more, you're gonna have to unplug it and plug it back in for it to restart and then give you another 1.4 minutes. Now, if you have a bigger tank, uh, <coughs> first of all, if you have a bigger tank, this is for nano tanks. If you have something bigger, I suggest you get the other model of this um, Tunes Awesome Letter. They have a bigger version. You're better off getting that. But if you don't want to, um, for tanks from 26 to 53 gallon, you can open this thing up, and there's two little, two little clips here. You push it, and it's gonna open up. Let me open it for you guys so you can see it. You're gonna have to squeeze it, and then it's gonna pop out. I'm gonna take it out for you guys. Okay. So now that it's off, let me bring it closer for you. Now that it's off, you're gonna see there's a little jumper right there. The jumper is in factory settings. And it will, it, in this settings, when the jumper is like this, it will run. Let me give you a little closer. Okay, in this settings, it will run for 1.4 minutes. If you have a bigger tank, you're gonna have to take this jumper off, and then what you're gonna have to do is, hold on, you have to take this jumper off and slide it down. So let me show you. You take the jumper off, and you slide it to the right, just so. You see it? And this, when you do this, it will run for 2.45 seconds, minutes, I'm sorry. Two minutes, 45 seconds. For those of you with the 26 to 50 gallon tanks, you're gonna have to do this for a longer run time of the water. So I'm gonna put this back the way it came from factory because my tank is 20, my tank is, technically, my tank is 45 gallon of water volume, because I got 20, uh, 42. Because I got 22 on the display, and then I have 20, and then I have 20 on the bottom. So I could technically run it for 2.45 minutes, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna run it in factory settings and see how it does, and if there's not enough water being pumped into the sump, uh, in one minute and 40 seconds, I'm gonna have to switch it up to a longer time period. So I'll run the factor settings and see how it does. And if I need to change it, I can always switch the jumper and go from there. So let's install the cover back. Make sure you get everything covered the way it is supposed to be covered.
So this is it. This controller, what you're gonna have to do is find a dry location to put this controller and you have to be very careful that this controller or the wire connection on the controller does not move around a lot. Now, when I had um, the other uh, ATO on this tank, on my, on my Nano Reef, the reason it stopped working because this controller, the power connection, got loose and it got bad and it got salt water in it, it got not salt water, but it got salt creep on it and because it was close to the tank. So you want to keep this away from your tank. The further away, the better. Keep it away from moisture, keep it away from salt buildup. So you don't want salt buildup on, on this guy. This is the heart of your whole system. Without this, everything else is useless, okay? And I'm sure Tunes has replacements, but you don't want to have to do that, okay? So just Put it, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna put um, double-sided 3M tape over here, and I'm gonna attach it somewhere far away from the tank so there's no moisture or water or salt or anything getting on this system, okay? So the last portion of the electrical connection is, you're gonna take your DC cable, and that goes in here. Just so. Okay, so you can have three, three different wires coming out. Okay, and yeah, you want to keep this away from water. So we cover the electrical part of it. Now, <coughs> let's put this away. Actually, no. Let's do the, let's do the actual water pipe. Okay, so here is the tubing that came with it. It's quite long. I'm going to say this is probably about five feet of wire, my guess, but I'm just guessing. So what are you going to do? It's very simple. I'm going to take the end of this right here and just push it in to the pump that it came with. And you can take this off like, like I just did and you can to make sure the tubing is fully you might have to rotate it to get the tubing fully in there okay I think it's fully in and then you put this guy back in here and voila you're done okay your setup is done and this other end is gonna go where inside your sump and this clip is for this end this clip is for this end so what you're gonna do is remove this and then there's a nut here you're gonna have to take this nut off this little nut and you're gonna take it off and then this clip this little hole you're gonna mat put the nut through this hole and it'll hold it just so after you hook it up okay so let me go ahead and do that let me move this out of the way get my get this hex nut out this is plastic material by the way so be careful you don't want to break them okay so that's off and let me show you so it's a bolt and a screw a hex bolt and a screw and what we're gonna do is I'm assuming it's gonna go like this so if that's the case we're gonna have to attach it like this we're gonna, I'm gonna put this guy how do I want to put it I'm gonna put him like this and then fit the bolt through this, through the holes on the other end of the tubing, and then put it in here, find the hex, and then somehow screw it in. So just attach, hold it in place, and just rotate 
the screw. Keep rotating the screw until it tightens on the nut. There we go. If you have a screwdriver, flathead will work on it, but I'm just finger tightening it. You don't want to, well, so if, you, if you're going to be using a flathead, do not over tighten this. These are, this is very soft plastic and you'll, if you, e you'll easily break it, then this whole concoction is useless at that point, okay? So keep that in mind. Finger tighten it. You don't have to use a screwdriver. Um, and then we're going to put this guy back where he belongs. And voila, this is it. This is your setup. So it's gonna sit on the tank like this, like so. Let's pretend this is your sump wall, sump glass. And it's gonna sit like this, and you're gonna tighten it up on this side, like so, and then it will drip water in it. And you can move, you know, you can give it more. See if you loosen it, the screw, you can feed more of the hose in it, or if you want it shorter, you can do that too. I'm gonna leave it the way it is, and I'm gonna tighten the screw back up again. All right, this is it. So, you have seen the whole setup. I showed you guys the electric, how the electrical connection are to be, and how you're gonna <coughs> connect the air tube, airline tube, to the pump. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down to the sump. I'm gonna install it and I'm gonna show you the way I'm gonna run this ATO. Okay guys, if you have any questions, put it in the comment section below. I'll try my best to answer it. Something I did not cover, comment section below. I'll try to answer it. Um, but in 2.5 seconds, we're gonna go down to my sump. You're gonna see this thing all hooked up and ready to go. Um, and let's show you guys how I set it up and most importantly, the placement of this uh, controller. That's the very key thing. You have to keep it away from moisture, salt creep, and all that stuff. What I might end up actually doing, what I might do is, I'm thinking of a best solution for this. Um, what I might do is I might put a plastic cover on it and just put a plastic cover, right, like so, and then zip tie it so this whole concoction, this whole monitor is spill proof, moisture proof, or any type of salt creep proof, okay? Because you have to make sure this thing does not wiggle too much because if it wiggles, the connections will become loose and then you're not gonna get connection from the DC power uh, cable and then you're gonna have whole, all sorts of issues. So I'm gonna find a way to cover this guy up, protect it, make sure there's, you know, these wires are not wiggled. They can wiggle, you know, do a normal function or when I'm doing system maintenance on the tank. So protection of this is very crucial. I learned my lesson from the previous ATO I had, so that's why I'm, I'm putting so much emphasis on protecting the controller module. You guys should take heat and you know do whatever you can to you know protect this controller module. Without this thing, everything else is useless, okay? So with that being said, let's go down to the sum, show you guys how I uh, hook this thing up, and we'll go from there. Now we're at the sump area. I just finished installing the ATO. So let me show you guys how I did the setup. So let's get to the back. Um, here we are. This is my reservoir, freshwater reservoir. Um, I think this is, uh, I'm gonna say 10 gallon uh, bucket. And my fan is there. But the reason we're here is to see the pump. So right there, that's the Tunzi pump right there. And I have some water in there. And the pump comes out, and here are the wiring, like I said. Um, I have them all zip tied, and, it, and as you can see, there's already some salt creep happening. And let me just pull it up a little, let me show you guys what I did. Sorry about the water mask. So, like I said, the controller, the membrane, the brain, 
I have it wrapped in a plastic and I have a zip tie to secure it to keep it dry so no moisture no soft creep nothing touches this controller and I have it tucked away inside Let me move this. and I have it tucked away inside here away from any sort of water nowhere near the sump area it's in a dry area right underneath the tank where all my rest of my cables are so it's secured away so no chance of exposure to moisture or <clears throat> salt creep or any of that sort so so now that we sh we covered that let's get down to the sump let me show you where I have the, the float switch And here it is. Let me do it for you. There's a float switch. I have it right before the return chamber in the baffle that I have. And that's where the float switch is. The cover is on. And and that's where I have the right there is the the water line tubing. So when the float switch goes down, water just comes out right into the main, the return section, and it maintains the water height. All right, so that's that. So let's go back up top, and we'll finish up this video really quick for you. Hey guys, welcome back. Um, now that we finished looking at the setup of the auto top of system that I just uh, installed, um, just wanted to recap. It's been actually couple of weeks since I set up that the Tunzi Oscillator Nano on my Sun Prefugium and I'd have to say I'm really happy with the product and it's been working efficiently no issues turns on turns off when it needs to no issues with the pump or whatsoever um, and it's very crucial in setting up a reef tank so because you have to maintain the salinity of your tank which is very crucial especially when your tank is stocked with corals you don't want too many swings on the salinity when it comes to reef tanks because the corals can get affected even fishes um, can get affected by high swings on salinity too high too low you know if it's up and down like that it's not good so having an, a, a good um, Auto top off system is very crucial to any reef tank and I want you guys to invest on a good um, auto top off system in the beginning of you setting up any reef tank. It's one of the equipments that is there's no there's no alternative to it. Um, you know, hand auto top off with the hand with you know, doing it yourself is not efficient at all. Um, so it's very important you get a good auto top off system and I can be happier uh, with the Tunes Oscillator that I just set up on my tank and I know it's going to keep the salinity where it, where it needs to be, topping off the water and also and another benefit, benefit of having auto top off um, system is your protein skimmer. You want your tank water level to maintain, especially the sump where your protein skimmer is, that water level needs to maintain at an optimal level for a protein skimmer to run efficiently. If your levels are off too much, too many, too many big swings in water level as well, will throw off your protein skimmer and it's not gonna do what it needs to do as far as nutrient export. So an auto top of system is very crucial to any reef tank and hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. My apologies, my, the video was too long because I wanted to show you guys a setup of it. <coughs> and, you know, um, I didn't read the instructions beforehand. I we just, we kind of winged it and it was a little bit longer <laughs> than um, other videos are. But this way, at least you got an in-depth look at the setup process, how I set this uh, auto top off system up. And if you have any questions, like I said before, put in the comment section below and I'll answer it. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, Hit the subscribe button hit the bell so you know you know when I upload a new video I have so many videos that I shot already and they're, they're in post-production and so I'm actually we're actually trying to catch up right now on the channel with where my tank is at this point um, so stay tuned 
I'm gonna be I'm dropping videos almost every week now. So stay tuned if, and appreciate you guys. Those of you subscribed, any suggestions you have, put in the comment section. I'll I'll read it and we'll go from there. But thank you for watching. Um, until next time, happy reefing and take care, guys.